Hey guys, I'm here with another video and I just wanted to give you my two cents on the whole E3 2020 situation and how the entire event is pretty much cancelled um, and how I was right, again, I was right because if you remember last year, I made a video about the E3 2021 presentation and how it was awful and how I stated that E3 would never recover from that day, that event that it had last year. And I was being serious. I knew it was going to go down in flames. And it was inevitable. I didn't know it was going to be that quick that they were going to cancel this year's event. But they ended up doing it. So, hey, now there is another side to the story where they're saying they're coming back with the 2023 event. So I think we should just get into it. So if you remember last year's video that I made, um, the reason why... I thought that the E3 format started to fail and how it failed. It was just awful that year specifically. You know, you saw this decline in the E3 presentations from years to years. It just kept getting progressively worse. Last year was the pinnacle of that. We saw th there's like three reasons why E3 2021 was a failure. Number one was that there was no actual big announcements, no games, or if there were any, they were probably leaked. But even that, even the leaked things that's not even that big of a problem because if there were actual interesting games to be watched that wouldn't matter but you know all the big publishers like sony pulled out you know that was the big one uh and nintendo just you know they have their digital presentations so a lot of times they're not giving their best during e3 for a good reason so you didn't have that many game announcements i remember last year what i said was there were only like three games worth talking about which was metroid dread elden ring and that one indie game that i uh don't, i can't remember right now but those are like the three main games that if anything those were the only ones that interested me so that was the first big reason the second one was the lack of cringe because people love to make fun of e3 because sometimes it's cringy and yeah they're right to make fun of it but it's a it's an annual tradition to watch all the cringe coming out from the e3 presentations and there's something something enjoyable about that you know you watch these e3 uh, cringe compilations and they're always so hilarious to watch it's like a tradition at this point to just make fun of the event that's like a part of it but now that the event has you know taken on this other meaning this more standardized digital and i think that digital aspect has definitely undercut all of that because now the shows have been more scripted and a lot of the videos were pre-recorded the presentations weren't all that interesting because it doesn't have the same feeling. So a lot of things that they would have done that would have been cringy, you know, you get on stage and you say something by an accident that you shouldn't have or you make a big mistake and now you don't get that. And that was a big point too. And now the last one was the politics. That was the biggest news of last year was the politics just kept getting shoved in your face and not just like the, oh, we're going to talk about these political events that are happening. It was out of nowhere these unannounced presentations i remember take two made this entire two hour long presentation during one of the most busiest days on the busiest hours during the show they shoved in an entire two hour long lecture about diversity and inclusion in their company and how take two is a pioneer in that and that was what the show was about it wasn't about games it wasn't about anything they were just talking about stupid stuff and they were using their like leftist language and reality of how they believe that kids don't think that black people work in the industry for whatever reason and how they're the ones to tell everyone that they're wrong like that's the kind of stuff you were, you were watching for the most part and that's what we were dealing with and that was why the show was a failure. All these things culminated into this one giant mess. So, and now the show has been, has been canceled. But they did come out with a statement saying that E3 2023 will return. And let's read this statement. We previously announced that E3 would not be held in person in 2022 due to the ongoing health risks surrounding COVID-19. Okay, that part is a bullcrap reason. It is fake. How many times are you going to be using the COVID-19 thing as an excuse? You know, how much longer can you just keep pulling that trick out of the bag? Come on. So today we announced that 
there will also be no digital E3 showcase in 2022. Good. Instead, we will devote all our energy and resources to delivering a revitalized physical and digital E3 experience next summer. So they're going ahead and they're saying that whether enjoyed from the show floor, blah, 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 the 2023 showcase will bring the community, media, and industry back together in an all-new format and interactive experience. So they're doing a new thing. And if you think all those things that I mentioned are going away, I can already tell you they're not. They're here to stay. All the like the scripted shows although that might ease up now that they're doing the live event as well but it will still be watered down it won't be the same because they're doing a all new format that is more interactive whatever that means i can already tell you it's going to be a disaster and the politics they're going to be doubling down on them all these companies like sony and microsoft we see them constantly getting more involved in matters that they shouldn't be talking about like remember when they moved the playstation 5 showcase like the big announcement the entire thing we were waiting for in 2020 just because of black lives matter like what you're stopping the entire show that is meant to be watched for the entire world who's awaiting this and it's about video games and you're delaying it because of a problem in america or riots and you want to stand in solidarity solidarity with them it makes no sense and you know microsoft you see their new policies and sony themselves are adding these anti-harassment anti-bigotry stuff how they're trying to ban people who have as much as political conversations while playing games if they deem it to be offensive that is part of their program or their rules now so it's getting insane and it's going to get worse and you know i was right before about how e3 was dying and this is a pretty good sign that yeah indeed the show is about to come to an end and i think this new interactive showcase whatever that means it's probably going to be much worse than what we're expecting sure they're putting all this prep time to 2023 but i know it's going to be out of touch i don't know if they're going to make it more um, like, I don't know, I guess they'll be showing games and maybe they'll tell people to, hey, you can now go play this game. You can play a demo now available. I guess demos will be back. That's my speculation of what it means that it's going to be more interactive because how else are you? Oh, no. Does that mean that they're doing more Twitter polls and more Twitter? They're going to be asking people online about like, I don't know, some random questions on Twitter and they're going to be showing those on during the showcase. That would be awful. It's, I just got that idea because the Oscars did something like that, which I didn't even watch the Oscars because I don't think anyone should be watching that crap. But anyway, and I think the 2023 showcase, if it happens, I think it's going to be one of the last few nails in the coffin because will Sony come back to that? Why would anyone have that kind of reason to be invested in that? Not to mention Microsoft bought Bethesda, so kind of combined the Bethesda and Microsoft into one. So it also undermined the event in that sense. So now with all these acquisitions happening, like Sony buying Bungie and Microsoft buying all these other studios, uh, like Activision Blizzard, it's going to get much worse in terms of announcements. So don't expect it to get better. It's going to get worse um that is me signing out right now remember that is going to be like a very bad presentation i'm calling it now and we'll be back with another year to confirm that i'm right <laughs> okay let's not get too cocky but i think that's going to be the case we'll see we'll wait we'll live peace out